Hey guys, welcome back. Let's play Shadow Hearts Covenant. Last time we finished up all the extra little things we needed to, including getting Solomon's key, doing a mini game, and another wolf bout. And I do know how completely disjointed and all over the map I was in the last episode. I don't really know why, but uh, I guess my brain just doesn't work. <laughs> So we're going to try and do better this time. We're going to start with that kite string from two episodes ago that I was uh, so happy to get. And it actually turns in, into a competent physical attacker on the same level as Karen and even better in Blanca. Not on the level of our physical attackers, but it puts him in a good spot. Now let's go to the next town so we can buy some new gear for everybody. Finally time to set sail. Ready to go? All set. Now, you may have noticed from the menu there, and I can show it here again, well, I can't now, but uh, yeah, you get automatically healed uh, once you set sail on the cruise ship. Now, well, it's not a cruise ship, but you remember uh, the previous game. We got on a ship, and we had this whole thing with Yuri being seasick, and a whole bunch of stuff happened on it. Yeah, we don't get that this time around. We're just... Ta-da! We're here. And that's it. I was trying to get that item. Sergeant Upham. Upham? I don't know. Anyway, you want to go to Wales? Fortunately, a storm has caused the landslide blocked off the road. Oh, of course it has. What else do you say? Nothing! Shut up! I already talked to you. Give me my item. Got, uh, let's see, we got nine items here. I don't think they're all available before uh, we go and spend a night at the hotel. But uh, let's pop over here and talk to a few people that are here. Travelers from France. Lucky your ship didn't get stranded in the storm. Hurry on to the end. Well, I can definitely do that. I know there's an item here later. Oh, it's here now. Okay. Well, that's two. Well, I know who's going to be here in the morning. And I think that's about it. I think that's all we can get tonight. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, it's hard to even find the hotel. It's kind of half hidden. There was a little graphical glitch. Looks like Karen warped. What's going on here? You kind of heard the uh, kind of the splash or the tink of coins there. Hopefully, you could anyway. It's like someone was uh, kind of bought off. I thought it might be you. It's been a long time. Huh. It's you. Yes, Kato. It's been a year. No, longer. Okay. We get we can't take a stop moment for a sec. First of all, I went like I when I played this game, I was like, that's Kato? The the little tiny guy from the previous game. And I'll, I'll throw an image up there for you from the previous game where he just, he looked completely nondescript. Now, I actually forgot because I never really paid attention, but the little portrait they gave him in the previous game, he does look the same facially. But he put on about 100 pounds of muscle in a year. <laughs> I don't know whether this guy's on steroids or what he's doing, but he was not this big and he was not this jacked in the previous game. And I have no idea why they decided to give him such a huge character overhaul. He was such a minor character the first time around that it's just extremely off-putting to see him like this all of a sudden, especially considering both his role and his stature in the previous game. Also, when you come out of pause, it's it 
like uh, slowly fades the audio back up to normal levels, so I'll be quiet. Uh, how you been? Who is this? Huh? A friend from my Shanghai days. Uh, I, um, mm. Japanese Imperial Navy. Special Agent Masaji Kato. Also voiced by Margulis, Margulis from uh, the Xeno series. Hmm? Japanese Imperial Navy? Hey, you're all being so rude. Oh? How so? These are your new friends. Quite an interesting group. A lot has happened since we last met. But what about you? You've really changed your look since the last time I saw you. <laughs> well, yes. A lot has happened to me as well. <laughs> it's a tough job, being a diplomat. I just arrived back from New York this morning. And now because of this storm, I have to cancel my trip to London. Same old Kato. Still following orders, I see. We're in the same situation. A landslide stopped us from going to Wales. Wales. Yeah, Wales. Have you been to Wales before? No, but I've heard a lot about it. It sounds like an interesting place. Nah, there's nothing there at all. Probably just a bunch of weird monsters. Mm. You folks want to go to Wales, do you? Yes, that's right. I just came from Rondo. It's west of here. If you go through the mine there, you can go all the way into Wales. Really? Uh, well, yeah. I mentioned this before and I'm going to mention it again. Keep your eyes on kind of how the scene plays out, especially when there's voice acting, just in terms of the direction, you know, things like how long they hang on specific scenes or like specific images, the time in between dialogue when it seems almost unnatural at times. At least, at least in my opinion, that's kind of how I feel a lot of the time with this game, and it's slightly off-putting. Uh, it's not really all that bad yet, but it'll get worse. It's kind of unfortunate that way. And then the war came and destroyed everything, like war does. Mine and day and night. Huge accident. Well, I guess they're not doing a whole bunch right now. Also, for a game with a lot of music, they spend a lot of time just giving you atmosphere. Like, uh, I wouldn't even... Like, this isn't really music. It's more just... I think it's supposed to be, like, a wind effect. And the fire in the background. Considering there's a lot of really good music on the soundtrack, I'm surprised that there's a lot of time uh, as we play that will be like this with just atmosphere. Oh, wow, that's a lot. What happened after that? Except for the ghosts and monsters. Okay, well, sounds like a dungeon to me. Look at our party. It's an RPG. Of course we're going to go through there. Why not? This is Cepho, the rescued barfly. Remember him for later. A lot later. Let's do it. Eh. What could possibly go wrong? Just sounds like another dungeon to me. Okay. It's 
scared of the little ghoulies. Ooh, howdy face. <laughs> I'll have you know the noble Marquis of Munich is my... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oops. The noble of which what now? Forget it. So yeah, if you recall, she is from the German army. So she might have some high up ranking there. But you remember, this is the time of World War I. A German noble sitting in the middle of the UK. Probably not going to go all that well for her right now. <laughs> Way to go, Yuri. <laughs> Looking for a slap? Wouldn't be the first one he got, and it won't be the last either. Mark it on your map for you. Well, thanks there, bud. Know where we're going. What about you, Kato? Don't get yourself hurt. Hope we get to talk again. Yeah, that's an odd uh, meeting. A minor character from the previous game. Just see how much they've changed over the course of barely over a year. A little scary. That's not the Kato I know. I think he fell on hard luck lately, huh? Well, if you remember uh, at the end of the previous... or I don't think it was the end, but there was a side quest that uh, you got a letter from, I think, one of Zhu Zhen's uh, friend's, friend's daughter, I believe. Uh, and it went over some of the stuff that happened to Kato, the assassination of Yoshiko Kawashima, the uh, lieutenant that he was serving under and had a crush on. They, uh, they played out that scene, and I went over it in... Uh, in the bonus episode to that series that came out just before this LP began. You're going to have a few drinks. If you get fallen down drunk, we're leaving you behind. Okay, then. You insist. Oh. Of course, I go and pick up water as soon as the cutscene ends. Warms you all the way down. You could drink like this every day. How about another? He's intoxicated. Karen? Tipsy Karen. Okay. I tried to keep up with you, Geppetto. I'd be under the table about now. Well. Well, they're having fun. Visevin's going through the mine. They still don't know what caused the accident. Some of the survivors say that they saw really ghastly monsters down there. Okay. Item number three. Hit area expand. We'll put the strikes and the hit area things to uh, use a little later. See, that leads out into the uh, er er into the, the town. Going up here leads to uh, bedtime here. Let's uh, pop in here. Hello. Four items. Another stud card. Fantastic. Napping Blanca. Sound asleep. Snoring Joachim. Yep, for sure. And there's nothing there. Okay. Ah, got to. Any items in here? Go and talk with me for a while. Everything. Oh, now Karen is sloshed. Well, I guess they kind of went and did what they weren't supposed to do. That's fantastic. <laughs> they don't even bother to tell you how drunk he is. It's just like, well, tonight's already hooped. <laughs> Hang over tomorrow. I think I've had more than enough. That feels sick. Don't shake the drunk. That sounds like a terrible idea. Because <laughs> the four mass curse. My weakness that got Alice killed. Stopped feeling red over it. We'll bring her back anyway. 
You lost Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel Kawashima as well. Yeah, it hasn't been great to either of you, has it? Couldn't protect her. They're both in very similar situations. They lost, you know, the, the woman of their dreams uh, because they were unable to protect them from whatever else they happened to do that got them in trouble. Events that day seems so long ago now. Yes, she wanted that kind of freedom too. Yeah, if you recall from the previous game, Yuri was a lot more of a free spirit uh, that time around, and uh, Kato and Kawashima together were very much following the rules until Yuri had a bit of an impact on them, and they started to, you know, use their brains a little more and think outside the box. And so it kind of changed them meeting Yuri, and then things didn't go very well after that for the Lieutenant Colonel. So. Kato now is left to pick up from where he was before, and, well, it's hard to know what's, uh, how he's going to respond to that. Dying like a dog, huh, Yuri? Got some weird curse on me now. Got it from a thing called Holy Mistletoe or some such thing. And I'm followed by some strange secret society. Secret society, huh? Sapientis Gladio. That seems like you realize something. I smell a lie. See, this is why I like video games and anime more than the real world at times. If this was a real conversation, you know, you'd probably fake your way through it if you were Kato and none, no one would be the wiser. But here, things are obvious. People, you know, they don't always say what they mean, but at least from, you know, the viewer's perspective, you can actually figure out what, you know, they might be hiding. So, yeah. My little rant. Keep my ears open. If I hear anything about them, I'll tell you. Better get going. So yeah, this game is kind of a mixture of voice dialogue and text-based dialogue. So some scenes will be full of uh, cutscene, or some episodes will be full of cutscenes. Some will be full of reading. Some will be full of battles because this is an RPG. That's just kind of how it goes. See you again someday. After meeting him, I wonder uh, if we'll meet anyone else uh, from the previous game. Other than, of course, you know, Yuri. <laughs> well, they passed out at the counter. The uh, bartender didn't do his job, didn't cut him off. Okay, we're here again, are we? You find what you were looking for. Nope, not yet. Sad voice. Voice of your heart, huh? You're looking for Yuri's happiness. Could be something small, anything. Hmm. But I can't find it anywhere. Well, Yuri doesn't have happiness right now. You're just fine. Super happy. You don't have to try and pretend. Well, you are inside his soul. You probably know a bunch of things about him that he's not willing to accept at this point. Doesn't surprise me. It's a very understandable reaction from Yuri. Like, I can only imagine I haven't been put in a situation like that, but you can only imagine, you know, the torment going through him after losing, you know, the love of his life, who basically died to save him.
Your purpose is revenge. This is definitely a JRPG. And JRPGs love the revenge subplots. In this case, it's almost the main plot. Can't see it with the naked eye. Hmm. Must be in there somewhere. Can see your heart, huh? Can you see the future? Nope. Well, it's your own little guardian angel there, Yuri. We all decide our own future. No such thing as fate. Feel like you're shift sifting through my dirty laundry. Hmm. There's a door I can't get open. Haven't looked everywhere yet. I'll still have to be uh, looking around for a while. Never thought somebody would ever be poking around in my heart. I'll be seeing you. Even if you get sad, don't forget to live. So they've established, even though Yuri hasn't really said anything about it, He's definitely still kind of in a bit of a funk after the loss of, you know, Alice in the previous game. Out of work and I'm irritable. Leave me alone. Well, okay, dokely then. Yep. Listless beaten. No work in this port either. Okay. Uh, do you say anything useful? Okay, you say nothing. That's fine. I think we were at four items, if I recall correctly. There are nine in this area. And there's also... Hello. Rich interaction with other countries, huh? Exchange students with Japan. Yeah, as I said uh, in previous episodes, the... Uh, Talk to you real quick. Rumor about a giant meteorite falling in Wales about half a year ago. Hmm. Ripped apart the sky with its light and reached up in the heavens. Well, you said half a year ago, but isn't that kind of referencing the previous game? Eh, whatever. But yeah, the uh, the widescreen mod shows a little more. Normally, the uh, in 4x, I think it ends somewhere around there, so you wouldn't see that back area there. Booming here. Laborers and engineers from all over the world. Alright. Stopped raining, but it'll be a while before the road is open. Telling me to enjoy your vacation. Here, you have it. There's an, uh, item number five. Bullenfogel is my best guess at how to pronounce that. <laughs> it's probably wrong. Six, Leonardo's bear protects against its death. Ah, uh, yes. A side quest. A fun... That's not a fun side quest. It's a side quest, though. Hey, you dropped something. The straw merchant. Wouldn't want to lose this. Why are you carrying up dried up straw anyway? People in the world who do anything to get their hands on this. Are you sure, buddy? Hard to believe. Ten years ago, I was a poor farmer with only one strand of straw. But I found someone who wanted it. Traded with them. And then I traded what I got for something else. And... Over time, I gained status and property almost without realizing it. So, the basically kind of buy, sell, or trade your way to uh, getting something more valuable. Yeah, there you go. You picked it up, you should keep it. It's probably fate. I'll let you have that bit of straw. A little luck, that little bit of straw will turn you into a millionaire. Not quite, 
quite close. Anyway, this is a long-term trading side quest over the course of the entire game. Um, there are many dead ends that lead you to getting garbage, uh, but you definitely want to hold off for the best route to go to the end of the game and get someone's ultimate weapon. Yes, very, very important. <laughs> I believe there is a way of getting it if you screw up the quest, but uh, this makes more sense. We get the dried straw, and this guy takes off. And up here, I believe, so that is seven? Yeah, four, five, six, seven. I think there's an item up here. No? Okay, then. So there's two more items here. Let us go find them. Well, that's useful, interesting dialogue. Invaders, today the castle wall cannon still remain. Now they probably should have, you know, changed it to football, but I'm sure there were some people that would have been, you know, would have been confused. But uh, since we're in, you know, Southampton in the UK, I think it makes sense to refer to that uh, as football, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already talked to you. What about you? Oh. Uh, I'm not young. Count me out. I need to go save first. <laughs> Hello. I'll make a dress for you. Okay, so we got two new more cards, uh, I believe, that we can make use of here. Now, we've already got the uh, water one, and we've got the wind one. The other two I would like to pick up right now are the dark and the, ho and the uh, holy one. If you don't have both, like I do from the previous game, um, pick one or the other. It doesn't really matter too much in the grand scheme of things. I'm not going to use a lot of these other ones, but uh, I don't have anyone who's either dark elemental or light elemental right now. So I'm just going to grab both of those so I have access to those, uh, those elements, basically. Yeah, we're not going to let you talk anymore. Yeah. Angel of Light. Yes, Angel of Light. And then we're going to get the dark one. Yeah, just pick whichever one you want. Other, otherwise, it's not a big deal. We have uh, lots of uh, ability to use uh, all, pretty much all the other elements right now. Uh, we've got a wind elemental character, an earth elemental character, and a fire elemental character. Along with Yuri, who can be whatever one he wants. Dark beauty. All right. So we got that all taken care of. And yes, you want patronage. So let's see. What can we buy from you? No. No. I am used to different games with different controls for the... Uh, you know, buying stuff. <laughs> Bear Claw. Kite String, we already got, so we don't have to buy. A Whetstone. And a Fine Rapier. And... You could get a Wool Coat. I wouldn't recommend it, because it's basically just as good. And I wouldn't bother buying Leather Belts for everyone. That's For two points, it's just not worth the money that we barely have enough of to do what we need to do. And we don't really need anything else. We've got 20 of those, 15, 10. You may want to pick up a Phoenix Tail or two. I kind of need a Talisman of Luck, so we're going to buy that. Um, tents we're good on for now. I don't think I need another one of those. So we'll try for discount. And we didn't screw it up, which is good. 42 points, only nine points left. 
Now, the way this works is if I try and buy a whole bunch of stuff now, I will all get it all for that 10% discount, but I only want to get spend enough money to get, you know, those nine so that I can get uh, the next, like, so, so I don't I'll only buy two, say, because 900 would get me nine points. And then I would buy the rest of them if I, say, wanted to buy more afterward, because then I could get the 20% discount. We don't need to buy anything else right now. Uh, don't bother to sell anything if you don't have to early on. You might as well wait until later. Uh, it'll just give you more access to other things. Uh, so there's our upgrade there. Most of the upgrades in this game are pretty worthwhile picking up. Uh, I would highly recommend you just buy the weapons that are available at most places. Notice how there wasn't one for uh, Joachim there. But uh, yeah, um, what I'm going to do, is there a save point in here? No. I don't want to have a save point. That'd be nice. No. There might have been an item behind Kata that I wasn't able to grab before. No. Okay. So we have two more items left to grab. And I think we're going to call her an episode here. There is a little bit left to do in this town, but it's going to take a little while. So I think we will do that next time. Uh, yeah, including the lottery over there, which I will definitely get back to doing. But anyway, that's pretty much all the time we have for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.